<sighs> Taking a deep breath. This is going to be uh, a little depressing, I think, sort of conversation. Ho- well, hopefully it won't be, but I, I have, I have, uh, I have some negative feelings about this. But generally speaking, uh, you know, things aren't looking good for wrestling in general. So, you know, as, as we talked about when, when WWE signed, uh, their, their new contract with NBC, uh, in USA, there was, there was rumblings that the shareholders weren't happy because WWE, you know, projected that they would get a, they would get double what they're, what they were getting before with the new contract. That never happened. Uh, the network is not getting the numbers that, uh, they, they projected or expected. Um, now there's the announcement that the shareholders, uh, as well as a, uh, you know, a, a, a big, big city lawyer have, uh, filed a class action lawsuit uh, against WWE for, uh, basically lying, uh, to, to the shareholders. Um, we'll know more about everything as far as that goes on Thursday because this week on Thursday, WWE's second quarter numbers are going to be released. Uh, many are expecting that trend to continue where they're not meeting the numbers that they projected. They not, they're not, uh, they're not anywhere close to where they wanted to be financially. They're going to lose more money, which means more cuts could be roster. Most likely it's going to be roster, but you've also got the backstage help. You've also got, um, you've also got corporate releases, people on the network, uh, who are working on the network. It's being rumored that they're basically walking on eggshells. No one's sure if they're going to have a job, uh, after Thursday. So, but WWE isn't the only one having problems. The big story out of TNA this week suggests that, uh, the overall contract negotiations between TNA and Spike TV aren't going that well. Uh, TMZ broke the story, uh, which was Incorrect, I think. I think that's the, the general understanding now is that, you know, Spike, uh, TMZ reported that, that Spike TV had canceled Impact and a- after their, after the contract ends in October, um, they were no longer going to run TNA shows. TNA and Spike TV have both basically, um, rejected that, you know, as far as they, they both said that that's not, that's not the case without actually saying that's not the case. They just saying that, negotiations are ongoing so uh but yeah uh overall it just seems like no one is doing well (laughs) so uh we we knew the wrestling industry hit a bit of a lull uh do you guys think or do you guys feel really i mean that we are seeing the beginning of the end of the wrestling industry i don't think so um you know, it does go through changes. We're not going to, we, we can never, uh, disagree on that. Uh, but I don't think it's the end. I just think that, like, TNA needs to, needs to have changed something to garner more viewers. I mean, this could be just a lower spot for, for wrestling viewers and that it will come back. Uh, you know, we've seen the ebb and flow before. Maybe it's, maybe this is going to be a low tide. I don't really believe that the WWE and TNA are, in, are really in dire straits like people on the internet are saying. Uh, as far as TNA goes, I don't think I trust a celebrity tabloid to break the news about impending doom for a wrestling company, especially when the trusted sources for wrestling news are all refuting that, with the exception of Meltzer and F4W, but then I don't really trust Meltzer and F4W either. Um, everybody dupes them into... Everything, so they're basically just an older, more established version of WrestleZone. <laughs> as as far as the WWE goes, yeah, they've got a lawsuit pending against them. But e- even if the lawsuit does go through, e- even if the WWE has to pay something out, I don't see that wrecking them. It, it it is a little worrying with all the budget cuts and everything, but I don't know. They they almost I don't want to throw the phrase "too big to fail" out there, but they seem to have a lot going for them right now that a lawsuit like this doesn't seem to be the giant killer in my opinion. Well, it's not the lawsuit. I think that's just, uh, you know, that's just one of the sticking points that is happening. But I mean, there, there, there obviously is issues where, you know, McMahon is losing a lot of money. Uh, WWE is not hitting the, the bar that they set for themselves with the network. 
uh, and any anything else really. And and I'm sure I'm sure them losing all of the pay per view networks uh, for for the most part probably hurt a lot too. So I mean, while while yeah, there's there's a lot of positives that we can see in both TNA and WWE as far as on screen product, as far as you know what we enjoy about the network. You know, we can't overlook what you know all of the financial issues that that are happening as well. Okay, first off, you're not a real company until you get sued by your shareholders. So let's just call it right there. It's kind of like you know you've arrived as a doctor when you get sued by sued for malpractice. Uh, it's just it's a lame business joke, but is it? Um, yeah, it's really lame. Uh, so them being sued by the shareholder for for it's not misleading. It's it's. Uh, yeah, it's definitely. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. It, it for me, the fact that they're trying to get a class action lawsuit together for the shareholders means that there's enough there, enough money there that these people think they can get some for themselves. Um, all WWE has to do is, I, I can't imagine. I'm not that big into the stock market, but WWE can mollify this thing. This isn't the first company that runs to this kind of thing. It isn't the last. Uh, as far as their numbers getting hurt and the network not taking off as much as it could, keep in mind this is a company that also tried to start an also tried to start a new professional sports league to rival the NFL and failed. And they survived. Yep. Losing some pay per view buys, I believe, in the grand scheme of things, isn't that big of a deal. WWE is really diversified with all the stuff that they do, especially now more than ever. So I think, given you know all the outreach they do, all the political goodwill that they have, I'm not political goodwill, the uh, societal goodwill that they have, you know their their merchandise line is just robust. The video games, the movies, everything about it. Yeah, losing pay per view sucks, but I think if WWE points to the fact that, yeah, our main product is down, but if you look at all the revenue streams from everything else that we're doing, we're growing there. And they still made more money on the TV deal. The The sticking point is that they didn't make as much as they said they would. Yeah. So at the end of it, they have to say, well, it was a negotiation. I mean, you know, we're the other half of the, you know, the, there's another half of that uh, on the other side of the table that also need to get what they want, and USA is going to be tightening the belt, the uh, purse strings a little bit every single time because you know their money's drying up too. So the fact that they got a pretty good, de- a pretty good TV deal, is not as great as they wanted, sure, but it's still something. I don't see this as the end for both companies. Uh, this that's that's chicken little stuff. Uh, WWE's not going anywhere for a while. Um, this is just something that gets them in the headlines, and uh, yeah. And the fact that TMZ is really the only reputable news source that's saying anything about TNA and Spike TV, uh, that says something. Uh, can you rephrase that to the only news source that is reporting this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, they're the, they're the. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm just Nick put it best uh, with uh, F4W online, so I'll just leave it at that. It's just, yeah, I. Uh... I'm a lawyer. Yeah, that big city lawyer. I love that line. All I can think is just that that the chicken lawyer from Futurama. Futurama. Walking. Now, I'm not a big city lawyer or anything, but I believe that misleading your shareholders is a crime against the free market. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I'm just a simple space chicken. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I, I'm with you guys on that. This isn't. Um, this isn't all doom and gloom. Uh, no. I, I think this, but it is showing that, you know, the, the industry is changing. And uh, I think it was, I think it was JR's blog post. He, he, he basically chimed in on, on this being, you know, most likely going to be one of the worst weeks in wrestling, uh, as far as news goes, just because, you know, TNA and Spike, that, that kind of came out. Um, and then you've also got, uh, the shareholders, uh, meeting, uh, or that report from WWE coming up this week as well. So, uh, but yeah, he, his, his, his thought is, you know, this is just a sign that, that the industry needs to adapt and change. And yeah, I mean, we can look at, we could look at USA and say, well, USA's numbers most likely are down as well. Uh, TV in general's numbers are down as well. So yeah, of course they wouldn't pay, uh, you know, double. <laughs> Because they, they probably don't have that amount of money, but still, I mean, as far as the lawsuit goes, WWE did specify <laughs> double. <laughs> that was that was wording they used. So I, I think I think the the lawsuit is is probably going to 
move forward uh, and, and probably hit hit WWE hard. But WWE needs to needs to adapt, and maybe they are doing it. Maybe it is be, you know them diversifying and not just not just trying to grow the wrestling side or as far as the new wrestling side, but growing the merchandise lines and growing the the, the movie deals and doing the non wrestling based programming on uh on the network like Legends House like uh Total Divas. Yeah. So uh maybe that is WWE trying to experiment to diversify and trying to uh you know succeed in a world where wrestling really isn't financially uh stable. TNA on the other hand, um I I really I really don't know. Uh, I really don't know what what life would be for TNA without Spike TV. I mean, we do know that Spike TV did fund TNA in a lot of different ways. They 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 basically uh were one of the major money backers when they went live. They're one of the major money backers when they moved to Monday nights uh to try to rekindle that that Monday night war thing that failed obviously. Um so I, I think, you know, there's a lot of negatives that we could say about Spike TV as far as being uh, a terrible network. You know, they, they really didn't do a lot of promotion both on their station and off of their station to help uh, drive new viewers to the show. Um, but at the same time, I think Spike TV did did finance a lot. And there was, you know... I did go to to the uh, the taping in New York. There was a Spike TV rep there. They made sure that everyone knew there was a Spike TV rep there because they were trying to impress them and were very uh very um almost like I don't know. They were just like very supportive of you know how if if Spike TV weren't there, TNA wouldn't exist, kind of thing. They were they were putting that type of messaging out there. So. Um, overall, I think, uh, I think them losing Spike TV would, would hurt a lot. But at the same time, I don't see how Spike TV could drop a show like, like TNA, who week after week brings in a million viewers. There's no other show on the network that does that. But the quiz show where they ask the questions of the people that they're about to tow, isn't that like three, four million viewers? Is that still on TV? I don't know what you're referring to. There There's are the apparently quiz- a few shows that, that do pull in those numbers now, but still, they 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 don't have a lot of shows that do what TNA does sure. every week. Plus a live show, yeah, and 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, a live show as well. Well, okay, not you sometimes semi live, <laughs> live enough. It's not live. It's, it's new to I us. Mean, yeah, it's live. <laughs> it's hashtag Impact Live. That counts. They have taped shows. Actually, was... it's not anymore. Did you notice that over the last three four weeks, it's been Impact on Spike? That's been the hashtag they've used. No, no. Yeah, I guess they're not live. I guess I'm the only one live tweets. All right. Hi, half live. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Overall, though, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think it's as doom and gloom as some are suggesting. You know, and and that, let's let's also look on the positive side of TNA. Yeah, of course, the American, the you know, the U.S. market is vital. It's very important. Uh, but if TNA lost Spike TV. Uh, I, it's not the end of the world. I think, I think it would give them time. And right now, I think they have time. I think this was all ploy either on one side or the other to get this out there that TNA was going to be leaving Spike TV in the hopes to give T- TNA, you know, an opportunity to shop around. But let's look at the international markets as well. I mean, they just signed all of those deals over the last, uh, year or two. India, uh, Japan, the UK, mm-hmm. it, it seems like all we hear is is positive talk overseas. Not so much here in the US, but it's always been like that, it seems. It always seems like they get the bigger crowds overseas or they, they were always getting great numbers, you know, outside of the US market. So maybe that's on Spike. Maybe it's on TNA. Maybe it's just the US market in general. We seem to be down on wrestling at large, you know, so... I don't know. So, but there, there are some, some other positive stuff happening. Um, yeah, I don't know. But it does have me worried as a fan. T- Quit being a pussy, Garvin. D- yeah, men up, grow up hair. Jesus, dude.